the spark of wonder. I've always trusted that to pull me into a project and to guide my way through. Because I think it's wonder that fires me up as a composer. It's at the root of what I like to convey. But there was a time when that spark and its sustaining power almost went out. I went to a lecture. It was given by my uncle, Ron Nielsen. He's a scientist. He had just received a Nobel Prize for his work. I was excited to go. He was going to discuss his work and why he'd been given the award. His subject, human-caused, worldwide climate change. I was not prepared for what I heard. After the lecture, everybody who was in that room went straight to the bar. <laughs> I left feeling depressed, hopeless, like my work as a musician and composer was pointless. The world is burning so fast. What can music do? My passion? My music? How is this going to have any impact on what I've just heard? What do I do now? Give up? I talked to Ron about it, and he said, no, no, Duncan. Don't give up. You are doing the good work. Now, hold on a second. I wasn't prepared to hear that. Here I was taking climate science seriously, and here he was taking music just as seriously. Maybe he was seeing something in music that I wasn't taking seriously enough. What was clear from his lecture is that we are living in a destructive story, and our story needs to change. Well, years ago, somebody noticed something about the connection between music and change. Beware of change to a strange form of music, for never are the ways of music moved without the greatest political laws being moved. In other words, when the modes of music change, society changes. So I started listening to a slightly stranger form of music. Here it is. What were we just listening to? Aliens? Laser beams, synthesizers, something out of a sci-fi film. These sounds are the voices of Waddell seals, swimming and vocalizing under Antarctic ice. Here's what's so strange about these sounds. These are ancient sounds. These sounds, they sound so futuristic. They sound inorganic, but they're made by living seals. I thought, I have to find a way to include them in my music as featured singers. So here's what I came up with. Listen closely and see if you can hear when the voices of the seals first appear.
nothing had ever guided me down this path of creating music like this, a kind of organic electronica. These sounds, they open up your mind. These aren't human singers. They're the Waddell Seals. I had so much fun with this track, I decided, why not create some more? Underwater gardens with the sounds of whales. A dialogue with a screech owl. Some creatures speak with their voices. Some creatures speak through movement. The sounds that come from the natural world are called biomusic. Biomusic. It's the sounds of birds. It's the sounds of whales. It's the sound of leaves and trees in the wind. It's the sound of the human heartbeat. There's something that happens. Did you ever listen to a form of music that you thought was strange? After a little while longer, you listen to it some more, it's less strange. Over time, it becomes familiar. Over time, you might actually look forward to it. Who knows? Eventually, you might actually love it. So, when Plato said, beware of change to a strange form of music because society changes, well, when I started listening to this strange form of music, something happened. I changed. I was filled with wonder. As composer in residence with the Portland Chamber Orchestra, I had a commission coming up, and I decided I wanted to find a story I could set to music that would address the climate crisis on a root level. My artistic partner and wife found something. She said, have you ever heard of the modern Prometheus? I said, the modern what? She said, well, it's the earliest sci-fi novel. I said, okay. She said, it has fantastic nature writing. Okay. She said, it has a beautiful evocation of the human drama with real ecological consequences. She said, look at this line right here. I tried to imitate the pleasant sounds of the birds, but the uncouth and inarticulate sounds that broke from me frightened me into silence. I thought, I know someone who's been listening to bird sounds. Me. I saw how that opened up my world. What is this? She said, it's spoken by the unnamed creature in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. At that point, I just laughed. <laughs> what? Frankenstein? It's the big green guy. Kind of walks around like this. Clumsy, not very articulate. Well, actually, no. In the original story, Dr. Frankenstein is the creator. The unnamed creature is the created. Furthermore, he's smart, articulate, self-educated, moves with superhuman strength and speed. I found that this creature was so different from every movie and pop culture reference I could find, I wanted to give him a chance to speak through this story. So I designed music. I did not alter Mary Shelley's tale, rather distilled the essence of the creature's narrative out of it and wrote a piece about it. It's called The Monster. Straight away, I heard a melody. It goes like this. Driving, obsessive, repetitive. It had the right mood. I didn't know it at the time, but this would be the seed that would grow into the overall music of the piece. And it underscores something powerful. There's a story theme in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It tells us something about our culture. To create, to bring things forth in this world, 
and then refuse to take responsibility for them, it leads to disaster. In the story, Dr. Frankenstein creates the impossible. He brings life out of unlife. He creates a brand new creature. And then what happens? Walks away, abandons it, doesn't even give it a name. The creature wakes up in the forest. He's looking for where he belongs. He's looking for a family. Then he hears the voices of birds. He feels a deep connection with the natural world. The movement of the trees, the changing of the seasons, the birds and the beasts. It's here where he tries to imitate the sounds of the birds, but the sounds he makes frighten him. He sees people, moves toward them. He's scarred, disfigured, they run away. He realizes, I am all alone in this world. He finds a house. A blind man is teaching his children. This is how he learns. Eventually, he tracks down Dr. Frankenstein, his creator, and he says, I want a mate. I demand a creature of another sex, but as hideous as myself. We will be monsters cut off from the world, but we will be harmless. Dr. Frankenstein, impressed, says, okay, I promise I'll make you a bride. He begins, he robs graves, collects bodies, and he builds the bride. At the last minute, Dr. Frankenstein panics and destroys her. Devastated, the creature exacts his revenge. He hunts down and destroys all of the closest people in Dr. Frankenstein's life, his dearest loved ones denying his maker the very human joys and belonging that he himself had been denied. Who is the monster in this story? Was it the creator or was it the creature? Our destinies are intertwined with our creations. And this is underscored in the music. Let's look at that theme again. It breaks into two smaller portions. Two chords, side by side. Dr. Frankenstein, the creature. Rather than having those two chords separate, we can intertwine them, alternate the notes like this. Underscoring that intertwined relationship is just the two chords. underscores this duality between those two. Life, unlife, the creator, the created. What was brought to life and not taken responsibility for and what we must take responsibility for. This shows us something larger about our culture. How we've gone into the natural world rearranged it, polluting in it, often with very little concern about the long-term consequences. Like Dr. Frankenstein, we may want to walk away, but what we now know, there is no more away. The modern world is too small. 
like Dr. Frankenstein, we may want to move away. But something always returns. What is created returns. Connecting the recent headlines. The wildfires, the superstorms, the carbon emissions, the plastic in the oceans. We are Dr. Frankenstein. Look at this cup. Is it alive? No. But does it have a life? Yes. If I toss it away, like Dr. Frankenstein, not my responsibility. Can we be more responsible with our creations? Can we understand that what we create has consequences? Can we take responsibility in a way so that what we create, the life, even the inanimate life, can allow other biological life to flourish, to regenerate? Looking back, there is a very real possibility that that climate change lecture could have shut me down. And I think that's what's going on with a lot of us these days. We hear these things, doom, pollution, climate change, extinction. It can just shut us down. Or we pretend we didn't hear it. We ignore it. We walk away. Or we say, I'm not going to be around to see it. Well, our kids are. We're living in a destructive story, and our story has to change. We can change this story. We can wake up. So, what is your passion? Let's refine that. What is your passion? How can it connect to a story greater than yourself? How can it connect to a story of responsibility for care that your deepest self can align with something much greater than yourself? My passion was under severe threat from the climate change lecture, but something happened. It broke me open and I found something incredible, bio music. It woke me up. It reawakened me. It reawakened me to the world and let me know we aren't the only ones making music on this planet. We aren't the only intelligence. Your passion, you can use that. It can save what we have. Thank you.